About four years ago, I started noticing my eye was getting really dry, and there was a small kind of red dot right here. I work in front of computers. I couldn't focus on the screen for long periods of time, and I would have to kind of take breaks, um, go lay down, even watching TV. It started growing, it doubled in size, and I was like, okay, there has to be something I can do about it, and eventually, we decided I have to do the surgery, and that's when I went and saw Dr. Isil. A pterygium is a growth over the white of the eye, usually in the nasal corner, that grows over the cornea, the clear part of the eye, over time. And it's usually due to irritation from ultraviolet energy. And as this growth starts to come over the surface of the eye, it can cause redness, irritation, blurred vision, and kind of a cosmetic blemish if you will. When we do trigium surgery, we do it with the patient awake. The procedure normally takes about 20 minutes to 30 minutes to perform. In order to release the head of the trigium from the side wall of the eye, we want to be careful not to use instruments that are too sharp and could cut into the eye itself. And then we'll take some scissors and gently snip away the inserted fused head of the trigium from the side wall of the eye. And you can see now how the trigium suddenly retracts away from the central part of the eye. We now are going to remove our initial stay sutures that were reflecting the eye for us. And finally, the eyelid protector. We'll next put some ointment on the eye and patch the eye shut for overnight. And tomorrow, we'll remove the patches and be on our way. That was Dr. Kiriasil and his patient, Caprice. Welcome to both of you. So I, I feel like we should have a quiz for the audience. How do you spell pterygium? <laughs> it's because a lot of people haven't heard of this term, pterygium. It actually starts with the letter P. But do explain to people what Caprice was dealing with, because it's common, and a lot of times people don't know what they're dealing with. Of course. Uh, pterygium is an old Greek Latin term that means wing-like, because to the ancients, it looked like the wing of a bird was growing over the side, usually from the side of the nose over the eye, having to do with the tissue breaking down due to uh, sun exposure, and then scar tissue growing in its place. And the reason it tends to grow on the side by the nose is because that area gets a double dose of the UV, both the direct and the, the UV that hits the side wall of the nose. And so the tissue breaks down, and then it starts to grow over the surface. So exposure to the elements. And, and did you always feel like there was something in your eye? What did it feel like? It was just really irritated most of the time. It was hard to focus on things for lar large periods of time. but. Um, so really yeah. annoying too. Yeah, pretty much, really annoying, yeah. So we have an animation here, Dr. Seal. Walk us through the procedure. We saw some actual images of the procedure, but walk us through what we're seeing here. So the scar tissue is growing over the eye. The first thing to do is to physically remove it. That leaves behind a defect over the surface that could be rough and irritating and allow the pterygium to grow back again, new scar tissue to grow back. So we smooth that off first. Then we lift up the free edges of the natural tissue and put in uh, medicated sponges to help to prevent the recurrence of the scar tissue. This is strong medication that uh, will achieve that. And then we put some biological glue, actual fibrin on the surface, followed by what I call the magic carpet. This is amniotic membrane, amniotic, actual amniotic tissue that seals the surface, giving a better cosmetic result, but more importantly, prevents the scar tissue from growing back. Using this newer technology, the rate of recurrences of pterygiums has dropped from as often as coming back 50% of the time to less than 2% of the time in the last several years. And that's what's key to this being a new procedure. In the past, you would do this operation for pterygium and it might come back. So her chances are 2% or less. Judging by how quickly she's healed, um, her chances of recurring at this point are even less than that. If you look at her without uh, a microscope, you can't really hardly even tell which eyes had the surgery. And Dr. Sue, you brought some before and afters for us? Yes, this is a typical example of what can happen to a pterygium if untreated. It can actually grow all the way across the surface of what's called the cornea, the clear window of the eye, and actually obscure vision. And in some uh, areas where there's not access to modern health care, it can actually lead to blindness. And just one more reason to get your eyes checked regularly by by your eye doctor, because this is an easy clinical diagnosis and then you can determine whether or not a procedure like this is warranted, correct? Absolutely. Well, good work as always, Dr. Asilo Caprice. We're glad you're feeling better. Thanks for being on the show.